my tips. Welcome to another Tech by Tips video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about one of those uh, video requests that I've uh, received. Uh, we'll continue with the series that we're currently doing later. This is just a brief pause, but we want to make sure that we take care of the video requests that I have gotten from people that follow the channel and have donated also. So this one is going to be about the application name Jacket. It was a request by Kitabwat7720. They said they want to see a Jacket Synology video guide, so we're going to do that. But I also have some, some other video requests that I need to push. So I'm, I'm going to probably put them in between the series. So you'll see like every once in a while a video that is like a parenthesis, right? So yes, let's talk about Jacket. Jacket is an alternative to Prowler. If you remember in the series, I was using the R's. Prowler is an R that helps you to manage all your indexers. So uh, you manage your list of indexers in that application and that application coordinates with the other applications to pass them the indexers, right? Jacket is similar. It does something similar, but it's just another application. It's also a C-sharp application and it has a little bit of JavaScript and HTML and stuff. And you can find it in github.com slash jacket slash jacket. And uh, it has a good amount of contributors to it. 391 people have contributed to the project. It's an open source application. The application is pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple to use. It basically works as a proxy server, like it says here. And it translates queries from your R's into tracker site specific uh, requests. So the requests are, are originated from your R's, right? And then Jacket captures those requests and then places those requests to the actual indexers and then returns that into your applications, basically. So it's really good. And it allows you to connect to a lot of different providers, indexers for you to get your stuff. And uh, you can create your own. So it's like TorSnap, when you, whenever you see TorSnap or something similar, it means that you create your own version or a new Snap is also for Usenet. So you can create your own if, if they're not already listed inside the application. So it's really good. And uh, it has support for, you know, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and it support, uh, supports public trackers. It's a whole list here of all the trackers that are in the application listed. They have also semi-private and private. So you have that full list of everything. You can check it out in their web, in their GitHub website. And, uh, works basically the same as Prowler. So um, yeah, you have more information here if you want. A guide on how to install it on Windows, on Linux, and Mac OS. Oh my God, you can install it pretty much anywhere. So yeah, and this is basically how it looks. So we're gonna see that in a little bit. So let's get to that. Let's get to installing Jacket in our Synology NAS. Log into our NAS, let's open Docker. Our virtual NAS still has all the stuff that we set up previously to run. So now we're going to continue on the last port that I had available, which I think is 8095. Yep. So uh, let's look in the registry for Jacket. And then we'll have a Linux server one. So that's usually what I prefer, Linux server ones. So we can right click, download this image. And then we can say, give me the latest version if possible. Uh, another thing, uh, people were asking me, how do I update the containers that I'm, I have running? Ideally, I use the latest tag because that tag keeps getting updated with the latest version of the application, right? Except with Redar, we couldn't do that because they didn't use the latest tag. But uh, with all the other ones, if you use the latest tag, it's easy. You can, since we're storing our configuration in our NAS in a folder, you don't have to worry about it getting um, like back to zero because it'll read those configuration files, right? So what you do is you stop the container, then you download the latest version of the latest tag to your NAS. And once you have that image downloaded, then what you do is you go into your container and you reset the container. So what that does is like it switches the whole uh, file structure inside the container to the file structure that you get from the latest image that you downloaded. 
and then when you start up again the container it's going to be started with the latest version that corresponds to the latest tag so that's how you update that this is taking a little bit of time so let's give it some time be back when it's done okay we are back and we have downloaded jacket uh, unfortunately i had to do it through the terminal because ever since i, ins I installed the gluton the NAS has been kind of weird. I probably have to rebuild it after that because, you know, it wasn't working properly with the Docker interface and stuff. So uh, probably for the next uh, video, so I'm going to have to rebuild it. But yeah, I was able to download it. It's the latest tag of Linux server jacket. I was getting a timeout error. So, but yeah, now let's uh, deploy that. Let's double click it. We're going to leave it on the bridge network. We're going to rename this as jacket. We're going to enable resource limitation and auto restart. Let's say that we don't want it to use more than... Uh, 2.48. So not more than 2 gigs of uh, RAM. Low CPU. And then we go into the advanced settings and we check here. And we have to add our usual 3. So let's click add three times and we put the process user ID 1026, process group ID 100, and time zone America, New York in my case. You pick the one that makes sense for you. Save that. And then we go next. And then in here we said we were going to use uh, 8095. So let's put that in there as the port that we're going to expose. The container is going to be running on 9117. And then for next, we need to uh, map the configuration folder. So this time I'm going to be using the Docker here configs, but we don't have one for jacket. So we need to create one in the configs for jacket. And now we pick that here. So that's going to be the config uh, directory. And we don't really need to mount anything else because this is just gonna pass web web traffic between applications. It doesn't need to store anything in our files, so that's good. So we go next. We validate that everything looks good. We leave that checked and done, and we're gonna wait for it to start. It should be in a little bit. We should see a new container. Here we go. Jacket. Let's click on details and logs to view how it's behaving. And it's working. If you see Cardigan, it's because this application used to be named Cardigan before. So you, you'll see, you still see some uh, leftovers from before. But yes, it's working and it's listening. So now we should be able to go to the IP of our NAS and to the port uh, 8095, 8095, and we get the user interface for Jacket. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. We have an API key that we have to use to set it up in our other applications. And we have a list of indexers that are currently enabled. Currently we have nothing enabled, so that's why we see that. And then here, which it just gives you instructions of what you need to do to set up your indexers in Sonar and Radar. And if you're using Couch Potato, how to do that and stuff like that. So in this case, for the jacket configuration, we can go here and we can specify a password let's say it's jacket jacket and we're not going to overwrite anything we leave it like it is oh we could have set up a black hole directory here so that it drops the torrents in the monitoring directory for our torrent client but we didn't set that set that up uh, if you would have set up like um location here for that you would put it here it would be like you map the location of the downloads folder and then you give the path here to the torrents and ncbs folder inside that which would be for example if we go into downloads it would be this one torrents and ncbs what you would map there okay so Basically, we don't need to use a proxy, so we don't set any of that. Yeah, we just leave all of this basically as a default 
if you have the open movie database api key you can put it here and the url also and if you have a flare solver api you can put the url here also to do that flare solver is another application that helps you deal with captchas a lot of times indexers have captcha, uh, captchas so if you have that it, it is able to automatically bypass the captcha so yeah uh, we can basically apply the server settings and that's it so if we go here again no i didn't prompt us so i would have to turn it off and on for it to ask for a password but never mind uh, so what do we do here uh, we can add an indexer here by clicking on that and then you can here do basically like we did with Prowler. So you can say, okay, I want to see all the public places that are for example, for English language. And I want to see stuff that is related to TV. And here you will get a lot, a list. There's a big list of indexers that you can add to the application here. For example, this is a turnt site. I don't see NZBs right now, probably because those are filtered out. Let me see if I can find anything that is an NZB. No, it looks like all of this is torrents. And the NZBs are most likely private. Let me see if I can find one to validate. I don't see anything in the N. So I guess they currently don't have in the list NZB addresses is mainly like torrents, but that's okay. So in this case, for example, let's say we want to add 133x. So we click here. No, we click here to see that the website loads and it's fine. Then we would go here on the plus sign, and that'll add it here, but it's not configured. So what we do is we go into the configure button here, like the wrench. And then you can set up things here if necessary. For example, uh, if it has more than one uh, option to download, you can specify, I want the torrent or I want the magnet, for example. And the fallback is, if it doesn't work with this one, then try this other one. So usually people put the torrent and then the magnet. Um, so you, you choose what you want there. And then here you can choose how you want the, the content sorted. I usually go with the cedars if it's a torrent site and I put it descending. So I get the ones that have the most on top of the list. And for this one, there's nothing much here to do. Basically, we just do that. And here's the list of all the things that are available here. Uh, so that when you add this to your R's, then you know which categories to use. So now we can click OK and then we, we can say that this one is already configured. So what you need to do is you need to test this, make sure that it's working. And once you validate that your indexer is working, then you keep on building your list here. This is all the list of things that you're, you're going to have available through Jacket, right? So you can keep on adding indexers, right? Let's say, for example, we want another public torrent site for movies. And then we find something here like, let's say, badass torrents. So we click that, we add it here, and then we go to the wrench, check everything, makes sense. So we try torrent and then magnet as a fallback. And there's nothing else to change here. So, um, oh, th this gives you a, a list here so you can write it down yourself which one you want to use. So if we click here, we can validate if it's working. So yeah, it is working. So that, that link is fine. So we say, okay. So now that that also is configured, right? The quirk or the disadvantage that Jacket has when compared to Prowler is that Prowler is able to automatically grab all of the indexers that you specify there and send them to your applications, right? but jacket is not capable of doing that so for jacket you have to go a manual way which is kind of tedious but i mean if you decide to go with jacket that's what you have to do so let's go into for example uh sonar so let's log into sonar 
So in here, you would go into the settings and indexers, and you see that Prowler is adding these automatically, right? But with jack, uh, Jacket, you cannot do that. So you have to come here and add, and then you have to say, okay, this is a torrent. So you would have to say, it's a tor snap because it's custom, right? So you pick that, and then you have to come back into Jacket and say, okay, this is the name of it. So 1337X, and then you would have to put all the information here, right? So you are gonna use this here to copy the, um, the TorSnap feed, right? So this is the URL that your, your application is gonna use to hit. So you copy that, and then you paste it here. So what is, what is this saying? This is saying whenever you need something sonar, you're gonna request that to Jacket. And then Jacket is going to get that request and submit it to all of the different um, indexers. Like in this case, we're specifying for this indexer. So Jacket is going to go, okay, I received a request for that URL, which is 1337x. So I'm going to go into that website and request what they told me that they need. And then once it gets the results, it passes that into Sonar. So here you need to put an API key and you're gonna use this one that is up here. So you copy that and you put it here. So that's the API for jacket. And then in here, in the categories, then you have to specify and you have to look at this. So for this one we have, for example, TV 5030, 5040, and those are actually here, 3040. Okay, so we're good, but sometimes the, the options don't match. So you have to make sure that whatever you pick here is available in Jacket. So that's what, another thing, right? So let, And then for the anime, you have to do basically the same thing. You pick the category there. You check because sometimes the, the categories are all over. You see there's anime, anime, and there's TV anime. So. It's a little annoying that you have to go through all of this. If you need sub, dub, or raw, whatever, you pick it there. So now it's in there. And then uh, if it's an anime, you have to use, you know, specify this. that You're going to search as an anime instead of a TV show. And then you can test. And when you test, this is going to reach out to Jacket. And then Jacket is going to reply back if it's uh, successful. So we got this, so that means that it was successful, so we can add it. But then you can see that you have to do this for every single indexer that you put in Jacket. But the good thing is that it works, and it has a very long list compared to Prowler. So if you need more options, Jacket could be an option for you, even though you have to go through the manual process and it's annoying to do that. But yeah, that's how you do it. That's the, how you set it up here. Uh, to work with your R's and then from then on your R's are going to connect to Jacket and Jacket is going to connect to the indexers and pass the information along and it'll work for you. So if you like Jacket, this is the way you set it up. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next video.